Greetings, 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 peace, love, and light family. I am Sis D. I'm a spiritualist and a naturalist, and I believe I'm an humble messenger and oracle of the Most High. Yeah. Sometimes I come to y'all with messages of encouragement. Sometimes those messages are just general information or food for thought, and sometimes they are correction or forewarning. And today's message is really just general information or some food for thought. I've been away from you guys for a little while. I wanted to really keep this season kind of light, fun, and pleasant. I know this season can be very difficult for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. So I wanted to just stay really light in this season, right? To give you guys a little bit of woo time to just decompress. So since I've been away, how have you guys been doing? I hope and pray to the most high that you guys have been doing incredibly well. As usual, I am outside in nature trying to get some fresh air and some sun. I hope and pray to the most high you guys were able to do that too. And since we are in the so-called quote unquote unholy, H-O-L-I, day sees it, and I'll explain why I got there. Um, I just wanted to, to give you guys a message that kind of corresponded with the December or unholy day season, right? So the topic for today is, is Christmas in the Bible? Yeah, right? Okay, so y'all, let's dive in. Let's talk about it, okay? So is, the Christmas, is Christmas in the Bible? Let's start with the first point. We know for a fact, biblically speaking, the Messiah was not born on December the 21st. I grew up believing that. It was a lie. Not true. Told y'all, the Bible's an encoded book, so let's go dig into the scriptures and let's really figure out the truth. Is Christmas really in the Bible, okay? So, one, where did that, where did the day December the 25th come from, right? That's the question that we should be asking. So, during the ancient times, the pagans celebrated Saturnalia and uh, they had these Yule logs that they were burning and some of the customs that we have today actually came from that and I'll get to that a little bit later but the day December 25th actually came about because the pagans were celebrating already Saturnalia and the Roman Empire vis-a-vis the Roman papacy or diocese decided hey we need all of these pagans to really buy into christianity so we're just going to roll into some of the traditions into christianity so it'll be an easier slide and an easier tradition for these pagans to come in to christianity that's where we get december 25th from y'all look up saturnalia okay so um yeah roman catholics <laughs> are basically the reason how we got December the 25th. Um, they decided to adopt the date to make it an easier transition for those who were converting to Catholicism, i.e. also Christianity, right? So point number two, y'all, the Bible is in a coded book. And I've said that before, right? So we have to look for the clues in the Bible. And I have notes, so I'm reading y'all, so that's why you see me looking over, okay? So we got to look in the Bible for the clues to decipher, right? So the Holy Scriptures don't give us an exact date or time when Yeshua, Yeshua was born, but it does. The Bible, Holy Scriptures, leaves us clues, okay? Clue number one, shepherds in the fields. If you're a shepherd, you're not going to leave your flocks in the fields by night, because it's cold. They'll get frostbite. You can't stay out there as a human being. It's only tents and stuff out there. So they couldn't have been out there. They would have actually brought their flocks in out of the cold to keep them safe from weather exposure and wild animals. Okay. So that's clue number one, shepherds in the field. And I'll put the scriptures up so you guys can be reading as I'm speaking to you. Okay. So two, there's another scripture that says Mary and Joseph were actually going to Bethlehem because Joseph was of the tribe of Judah, of the house of David. He had to leave Nazareth and go back to Bethlehem. That's where his forefathers were for, from. There's a scripture that says the Messiah was born when the ends were full. And 
we believe that the ends were full according to the scriptures the reason why we say that is that the ends were filled because it was Yehudites or the ancient Jews tax time so everybody left from where they originally were living and they came back to the city of their forefathers to de declare their pedigree and count who they were espoused to or married to and account for their children handmade flocks all of that so it was basically the equivalent of april the 15th or april yeah april the 15th for us when it's tax season and everybody's coming back to prepare their taxes and declare uh their their goods and grapes and it's it's kind of the equivalent of that and that's why there's the story of yeshua being born in an inn because there was there was no space for them in the hotels or the places where not hotels but y'all know the places where they would rent rooms to stay there wasn't any because they got there late and all of the spaces that where they would have slept were already full okay so that's number two um and i think that could be found in luke 2 8 through 14 or somewhere there about all right and so point number three are modern Christmas customs in the Bible? And if we go to Jeremiah 10, think Jeremiah 10 and 14, we can actually see that the Bible speaks about some of these things that were pagan customs then. The Bible actually, the prophets, the apostles, they actually spoke about them and they spoke against them that we were supposed to be separated. We were never supposed to be doing what the pagans were doing. Yeshua wasn't a Christian. He was a Jew. All of the apostles were Jews. They were Hebrews. They didn't celebrate any of these customs, y'all. They were not pagan people. They didn't celebrate pagan customs. So there's a scripture that says, and they go into the forest, and talking about the outside nations, they go into the forest and they chop down a tree and they hammer it with hammer and nails to secure it that it does not move and they deck it with silver and gold what does that sound like y'all you know what so called Christians do to the Christmas tree you go to your local nursery you get this beautiful evergreen tree that's grown for six years or seven years or eight years They've cut it down. They've brought it in so that you can buy it and purchase it. You take it home. You put it on your little tree stand and screw it in real tight so it doesn't move. Put your little bit of water. And then you put your tinsel and your ornaments in. That's decking it with the silver and the gold. And there has a lot of other deeper meaning, but I'm going to have to get into that at another different time. I want to move on to one other last thing before I close out really quickly, okay? Y'all. If there was no Christmas, if there was no December 25th, if there is no white Jesus and we are in this season, then the question I close for you guys to think about is, who then are you really worshiping? If all of these things that we've been told for the last how many hundreds of years are lies, then who are you really worshiping if it's not the Messiah of the Bible? right definitely food for thought because it isn't the one true and living god it isn't i am that i am it is not yahweh it is not great spirit so we really if you are true believers in the most high you believe in great spirit we really must stop back we must step back and look and make sure that what we're doing really aligns with what great spirit says for us to do that we're keeping his law, statutes, and commandments that goes down to the way we celebrate, the way we fellowship, the way we con congregate, the things that we celebrate, how we celebrate, we really have to transform and renew our minds as the Holy Scriptures speak, tell us to do, right? So y'all, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there and say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking a moment to share with Sis D on today. It has been a pleasure and an honor to come back before you guys and share this really simple subject. Is Christmas really in the Bible? It has been a pleasure sharing with you guys. I hope and pray to the most high you guys are doing incredibly well. As I generally say, thank you so much for taking time to watch today. 
to the delightful family, to the vibe of y'all tribe. I see y'all. I see y'all. May the most high continue to rich, richly bless you, be with you guys, and keep you all as we go into the close of this year. And Lord's will and life remains the opening of another. And I hope to see you guys on the other side. Yep. So with that being said, I'm going to close on out like I generally always do by saying vibe up, y'all. Vibe up. This is D, and I'm out.